Hi folks, welcome to the Prepared Homestead. This is Travis. Thank you all for stopping by to watch. Have you, did you see that video of the, the Chinese ship warship that basically cut off the uh, US Navy ship something like, um, you know, 150 yards distance, which I know sounds like maybe a lot. And if you look at the video, it's like, oh wow, that's, that's quite a bit of distance. Well, that's not really. I mean, I'm no naval guy. Um, I, I don't really know anything about that. But, I mean, I've been on boats before, and they're not like cars. You don't just slam on the brakes and they stop. Uh, and going at however many knots they were traveling, uh, that was pretty close. Uh, the U.S. Navy ship ended up crossing over its wake because it was just, I mean, it looked like a couple of party boats out on the lake, you know, where one's going and the other one comes around and cuts across and that sort of thing. And these are big naval warships. Uh, definitely, I would definitely consider that provocative. And remember that um, a, a, a naval captain of a Chinese uh, a warship is not going to do anything so provocative without approval from much higher ups uh, in the, the Communist Chinese Party. And, and then just a couple of days or so before that, a very exact same thing happened, except it was two planes. It was a US plane and a, a, a Chinese fighter jet crossed over in front of it. Uh, they say about 400 yards. And of course, the you know they have their own wake too in the, in the air, and so you could see the turbulence from the American side because that's where the camera angle was, um, cutting through that. Uh, there's been all kinds of stuff happen. Um, China and uh, the United States are both talking about how um, that that the we're on kind of almost a knife's edge. That it's it's being it's very uh, tedious and and. Uh, very delicate right now with the relationship, especially when it comes to the military. Uh, the, uh, our own chairman of the Joint Chiefs, or chairman of the um, of the Pentagon, sorry, a little tongue tw tw twisted, but it's, see, it's right there, can't even speak. Um, the, the chairman of the, the Pentagon, or the secretary of the Pentagon, uh, was saying that, that it's, you know, it's very very tedious right now trying to work out these relations and and our military seem to just almost be clashing and then China uh, their uh, head of their military has said the same thing uh, but it's not just with China this kind of stuff is kind of happening all over just in the last week or two um, we've had border clashes with Israel and Egypt with some uh, IDF soldiers uh, being killed uh, we've got Iran and the Taliban on the border of each other fighting. Then we've got Armenia, uh, Azerbaijan, and, and Iran, um, kind of on the other side of Iran, um, things tensing up. Of course, there's Russia and Ukraine. We've got Ukraine um, attacking inside of Russia. Um, uh, there's not just drone attacks, but actual soldiers. Um, they say that Iran, uh, uh, Ukraine says that it is uh, ready for its counteroffensive, and that they're going to go in and try to retake Crimea. Russia has said that's a red line. I mean, that, I, I would think it would also be a red line just having um, Ukrainian troops uh, invade basically Russia. But we'll see what happens. It's definitely heating up over there. And then you've got North Korea. Um, they're, they're launching sp uh, spy satellites. Uh, Japan is putting their missile system defenses on high alert. Um, China and India, there's some uh, border clashes still going on there. Uh, you know, and then our own border, we have 300 plus thousand people a month now coming across the border. Uh, and a lot of them are, are foreign nationals. There's just almost daily reports of uh, Russian and Chinese nationals coming across the border. All this is happening, and, and really more. I mean, I'm, I'm not covering absolute everything that's going on on the planet, but there's that's definitely a lot of the stuff that's happening. Uh, and uh, so many people just kind of, they're, they're oblivious to it. They, they're not aware of it. Uh, we're, we're watching the whole world intensify, and the tensions between nations... Uh, increase rapidly i mean it, there's there's so many hot spots right now that it that, you know you could easily say there's at least four or five potential major wars uh on the brink of happening in the in the whole world today 
And I, and I don't know that I can ever remember or recall a time in history that that has been the case. Um, it does kind of sound very similar to uh, the prophetic word of, of Yeshua of, of wars and rumors of wars. But maybe not. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm not going to claim that that's what it is, but it certainly sounds that way. I think that we have to get ready for war. I, I, you know, whether it's between us and China, which seems to be the most likely case, or, uh, you know, a greater proxy war with with us and Russia and Ukraine. Uh, one that I forgot to mention is Kosovo and Serbia. Uh, we're very much involved there through NATO. Um, I'm sure we're probably somehow involved in the Iranian and Taliban uh, fight. Of course, we're always involved in anything that happens with Israel. Um, and then, of course, we're always involved with anything that happens with North Korea. So <clears throat> our involvement in a war is inevitable. And it's getting to the point that a war is inevitable. And it's getting to the point that a global world war is highly likely. And so I think that we as, as prepared-minded people need to be getting ourselves ready for that. Uh, all of us have lived through a, some kind of war. I mean, certainly I would guess that most of you are old enough to have at least experienced the war in Afghanistan, the war in Iraq, um, and maybe the Gulf War, uh, maybe some of the conflicts in the 80s, maybe Vietnam, uh, maybe North Korea, uh, maybe the Korean War. Uh, there may even be some that lived through World War II. But I, we're, we're in a different place now, maybe than we've ever been with any of those wars. Um, and I think that the tensions of the world, and, and we're, we're in this place where there's a, a world power or, or a group, an axis of world power that is trying to rise up and, and take over the world, you know, establish themselves as the new uh, uh, world order. The, not, the, not necessarily the new world order, but maybe so, but the establish themselves as the, the head of the world, uh, world order. And that's, of course, China and Russia and BRICS and all their, their uh, associates. So we're, the odds of us having a major conflict are quite well. And we have to be prepared for that. And that's something that we've never experienced before. Uh, it's going to be, I, I believe, far, far greater and far more devastating than World War II. Um, I think that this could be, or most likely will be, the final war um, that will kind of put us into the, I don't know what to say, the, the Great Reset, basically. Uh, between war and uh, pandemics and uh, economic woes. It's, it's all happening at the same time. And we need to prepare ourselves, brace ourselves for this kind of war. And this is a war, um, or these wars, could easily find themselves on our shore. America has always been privileged in that way. And since, you know, 1812, we haven't really had a war on our shores. Americans have not had to worry about foreign invasion here on American soil. But I think that that's, that's going to change. I think that there's a, a much higher likelihood that that could happen. And even if it doesn't happen, the, the other problems that we will have to face, the other difficulties, um, are, are just about as great as a, as a foreign nation you know, invading our, our homeland. Uh, economic problems are going to just persist. We are in a, a very weak place economically, much weaker than you probably could say we've been before any war. Uh, and we're going into great conflict uh, with great adversaries that we haven't had to face adversaries at this level in a very, very long time in a poor economic condition. That is not good. It is going to affect us very, very negatively economically. In fact, some estimates um, show that the economic um, pain that we're going to feel if we end up in a war with China would actually be worse than what was felt during the Great Depression. Uh, and, and then, on top of the economy, on top of the potential for war, um, here, potential for invasion, is the fact that you can absolutely guarantee that our government will use this, will use any type of global war 
as, a, as an excuse to pass even more stringent legislation. Uh, we will see the uh, technology increase, we'll see the spying, we'll see the transhumanism, the fourth industrial revolution, uh, the, the usage of technology to monitor and control its citizens. Uh, it, that would easily be an excuse to implement a lot of those measures. And again, even though we wake up today and we see that we're, we're not really at war, I mean, we're in a proxy war and there's, there's little saber rattling going around, but we're not really in a war. And the one in you know, Ukraine and Russia is drug out for longer than a lot of people thought it would with very little success uh, on either side. And I think that we get to this place of complacency, this place that we, we just kind of think it's not going to happen, and if it does, maybe it's not going to be that bad. And that could all be true, um, but I think that the odds are in a different place. I think the odds are that it is going to happen, and that the odds are that it's going to be very great and severe. You can't have two world powers fighting for dominance and not have a war. It's, it doesn't happen that way. It doesn't work that way. Um, I'll admit that it could be more of a cyber war. It could be more of an economic war. It could be a war of disease spreading around the world. You know, who can come up with the, the, the coolest thing to, you know, chemical warfares, things like that. But um, the likelihood of a physical, kinetic, conventional war happening between the two world powers that are trying to establish dominance is very good odds. And we have to prepare for that. Um, and just these, these actions this past week with uh, China's military, China's Navy and their Air Force, I think kind of are, are, should warn us and wake us up the fact that um, the, the possibility of a global war that would very, very much draw us in and hurt us as a nation is real. And it's not even about whether we would win or lose because we could come out as victors of the war and still be very devastated as a nation. Um, and so we need to be prepared for that. And it's something that I, I warn you not to, get, um, not to get lax on. That's happened a lot, you know, with the whole Ukrainian thing. Everyone was all for it. You know, we were all talking about it. It was on all the channels all the time. And then now it's to the point that you hardly ever hear about it. News media doesn't cover it. No one really knows what's going on over there. It's virtually a media blackout in Ukraine. Um, and, and we don't know. Even though things are happening constantly, at least we assume because the few things that are leaked indicate that. I mean, at this point, there may not be any conflict going on over there. But I don't think that's the case. And um, I think that we need to, to brace ourselves uh, for the whole world basically going at war. Not just something called a world war, but an actual war of just about the whole world. Um, it's it's, it's, it's going to be, uh, I think, more traumatic than anything uh, Americans have experienced in, in their lifetimes when it comes to global conflict, because this is going to be quite a great war. Folks, it's time to get your houses in order and to prepare yourselves mentally, physically, and spiritually. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video. Throughout all history, precious metals have been the one solid asset that has held their value through banking failures, hyperinflation, and financial collapses. Visit the link below to moneymetals.com to find a wide variety of silver and gold to secure your wealth with real money. When I purchase online, I choose MoneyMetals.com because of their fast and secure service and competitive pricing on a wide variety of precious metals. MoneyMetals.com in the link below.